In the holy name of Jesus, amen. A lesson from Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, so that we can, with reverence, serve you. I wait for the Lord, my whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. I wait for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning, more than watchmen wait for the morning. Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. It's kind of an awkward position to be in, to speak repentance to you. It's kind of a heavy subject. I don't know you. You don't know me. I'm a sinner. They wanted a sinner to preach about repentance. Pastor Dobler said he was too busy, so you got stuck with me. I'm afraid, though, even though I don't know you, that you're probably like most people when you hear the word repent. You probably hear something in your ears like this. Get your act together. Toe the line. Do something about it. I'm afraid that when you hear the word repent, it's like that awful mother I saw in aisle five at Target. It really was one of the worst parenting moments I ever saw. I've seen plenty of bad parenting moments, being a bad parent myself. Aisle five in Target, and this lady is screaming at her kid, if you don't stop crying, if you don't stop crying, what's going to come next? She says, I'm going to tell Jesus, and he's not going to bring you any Christmas presents. And it took every measure of self-control that I had to not go up to that lady and say, I'm going to tell Jesus. <laughs> That's terrible parenting. You shouldn't talk like that to your kid. She confused Jesus with Santa Claus. It's terrible. When a preacher enters into your hearing and says, repent, the first thing to come to mind is not toe the line, get your act together. Literally, repentance is, you know what, it's a change of thought. It's a change of mind. Repentance in simple terms. Jesus says to you, your sin doesn't look good on you. Jesus says to you, actually, John, your way is the wrong way. My way is the right way. We sang in that beautifully haunting hymn we just sang that our hope would be found in dying and in rising. Do you recognize that, you who've been through the catechism? Dying and rising, that's repentance. That's daily life. When I speak to you about repentance, I'm not, I'm not talking about something you have to check off a list every day or, or get to church or get to chapel, okay, and now I've done this repentance thing. Repentance is God's gift to you. Repentance is God breaking into your lives wherever. Maybe you're like the psalmist. You're in the depths right now and you cry for mercy. Repentance is God's way of saying to you, there is a way to live. It's my way for you. And as you cry, what does he answer you in repentance? You cry to him out of the depths. What beautiful words we heard today. Here they are. There's forgiveness and steadfast love. And does Jesus keep score? He's not keeping score. Unfailing love, full redemption, and all of our sins paid for, redeemed all of them. And the awful part about me is that I don't want it. Repent? Who are you? Who are you to tell me to repent? You don't know me. Repent, but I actually kind of like it. Repent. No, this is more fun. 
And should God give up on you? No, he actually enters into your hearing again with a preacher, with a voice, not like that awful mom um, in, in Target aisle 5. He actually enters into your hearing and says, repent, I have a gift for you. We prayed in my church this past Sunday, probably a lot of churches had this prayer, it's an old prayer, that Jesus would shine into our lives, give strength in conflict, and, and, and light for a sin-darkened path. Are the conflicts still kind of real? Conflicts with people you love and you don't love, conflicts with girlfriends and boyfriends and people you have friend zone, conflicts with teachers and lab partners and teammates and coaches, there's, there's real conflict. And Jesus Christ breaks in this Advent season again. Uh, are you excited? I'm excited. I'm ready for Christmas break. I'm ready to be done with this school stuff for a few weeks. I'm ready to gather again with family and brothers and sisters in Christ and hear of a Jesus who listens to my cries for mercy, who actually washes sin away, all of them, who's not keeping score, who's been naughty or nice. There will be gifts for me, I'm sure, under that tree, no matter how the year has been. Hope for you, friends at Wisco, bold enough to call you friends, friends at Wisco. Hope for you in the strangest place, in a voice of one who says, not your way is best, but my way, my way given into death for you.